Just like T cells, we need to create tolerance to B cells to inhibit the activity of B cells. This would occur at both the end of an immune response when we want to perhaps stop the differentiation of B cells into plasma cells, which are capable of secreting antibodies, stop the secretion of antibodies themselves, or stop the production of new B cells that could potentially respond to antigen. This would happen when we're looking at it stopping an inappropriate response to an antigen, like a self-antigen, or to an antigen that is no longer a threat, like an infection that we've cleared. We need mechanisms that will work specifically on the B cell, because remember that B cells recognize a whole host of antigens, like carbohydrates and lipids, that T cells do not recognize, as they only recognize peptides. Because these antigens are always present, we're going to use self-antigens to discuss the parameters of B cell peripheral tolerance. So let's assume that this is a self-antigen on one of our cells. And this is a B cell that is responding to that self-antigen. There are only four possible outcomes for this particular self-antigen responsive B cell. First, just like in T cells, the B cell may become anergic or unable to respond or see antigen. It also may be deleted in a process known as clonal deletion, where it will undergo apoptosis as a result of signals it receives that basically induce it to kill itself. Next, it can add the expression of inhibitory receptors. These receptors, when engaged, will basically tell the B cell to stop responding. And lastly is a process known as sequestration. Literally, this is the B cell equivalent of kicking the B cell out of the house and changing the locks. The B cell will leave the follicle and not know how to get back in and therefore not receive signals to survive. Okay, so let's think back to B cell priming. During B cell priming, the T cells move through the paracortex, always getting closer to the follicle, where follicular B cells may also move closer to the paracortex, and they meet in the middle so that the B cell can potentially get some help from the T cell. Now, let's say in this case that this B cell is interacting with a bunch of T cells, and it just doesn't see anything it's, it likes. It doesn't see... Um, either a T cell that has specificity for the same antigen it has, or worse yet, it doesn't even have antigen. It can't find its antigen. So either way, it's not getting any T cell help. So it decides that, you know what, I'm going to leave this follicle and see if I can find my antigen of interest or T cell that can help me with this antigen elsewhere. So it leaves the follicle. So at this point, it's outside of the follicle and the germinal center, and it can't really find anything else now. It's sort of an older, allergic, and certainly not activated B cell, which means it has a really bad sense of direction, kind of like me without a smartphone, which is really the only way I make it to work every day. So it has no way of finding its way back into the lymph node follicle. And it also has no way of seeing the follicle to begin with because it lacks the chemokine receptors like CCR7 and CCR21 to even see it. Remember that chemokines are the beacons that actually would call the B cell home into the follicle. You could put one of those big wacky waving arm dudes in front of it and it would still go whizzing right past it because it doesn't have adhesion molecules, chemokine receptors, anything that tells it that, hey, the follicle is right here. It doesn't even see it. So in short, this B cell can't find its way home and it's not going to get any survival signals outside of the follicle that will keep it alive. And it's likely not going to encounter antigen. And in that case, it's going to die. So that's sequestration. And one thing that helps with sequestration are inhibitory receptors. The main way this and pretty much all of the other methods of B cell peripheral tolerance work is through inhibitory receptors. And mainly, that means FC gamma R2B, or FC gamma receptor 2B. The FC receptor, as you know, binds to the FC portion of an antibody. And in this case, we're talking about 
FC gamma. So this antibody has to be an IgG, and it's going to bind to the FC portion of IgG. When the FC gamma receptor 2B on B cells is engaged by the FC portion of an IgG molecule, it is always inhibitory. Always. I like this molecule almost as much as I like CTLA-4 because it's basically the B cell companion to it. FC gamma receptor 2B can inhibit in a couple of different ways. It will inhibit once it has bound to antigen and then bound to the FC receptor. So see this antibody here and this antibody here are both bound to antigen. This antibody is bound by its FC portion to the FC gamma receptor 2B on the surface of this B cell. Even though this B cell is also binding to the antigen, this ligation will shut down a lot of the responses that we would expect to be made by a B cell that is encountering antigen. First off, it's going to inhibit antigen presentation to T helper cells. In this way, it not only acts as kind of a secondary mechanism of peripheral tolerance to the T cell itself, but it also works to inhibit class switching that could occur as a result of CD40 and CD40 ligand engagement, thus inhibiting the differentiation of this B cell into, say, an IgG-secreting plasma cell. FC gamma receptor 2B also can induce sequestration, which I just talked about. Basically, if this T cell now tries to leave the follicle because it didn't get it what it wanted out of the T cell, it can leave, but it won't be able to get back into the follicle, and then it won't get survival signals, and it'll die. Lastly, it can decrease antibody production by plasma cells, and it can also induce apoptosis of plasma cells. This specifically can be linked to diseases like lupus. Lupus is largely considered an antibody-mediated disease, where we make antibodies to our own DNA, and these form antigen antibody complexes in your body, causing all sorts of inflammation. So let's say I'm an antibody, and I come in contact with a B cell or a plasma cell, and I attach to these FC gamma receptor 2B molecules on the surface. If I attach and it's strong enough, it's since the signal is always negative, it will say, uh-oh, this cell is specific for a self-antigen. It's not worth having. Let's kill it off. This process can also be used during the process of somatic hypermutation within the lymph node, where it can get rid of B cells that are created that have a weak affinity BCR. We often think of somatic hypermutation as a way of contributing to affinity maturation, that it's a way we get more um, specific antibodies produced, antibodies with higher affinity for our antigen. But for every winner, there's got to be some losers too. So occasionally you're going to make mistakes that lead to weaker affinity. And in that case, you can wind up getting FC gamma receptor 2B engagement, which will lead to death of the cell and apoptosis. So in summary, when we're talking about B cell peripheral tolerance, be it to a self-antigen or a foreign antigen, like a pathogen that we've already cleared. You can get energy and clonal deletion, just like we saw in T-cells. You can also, using inhibitory receptors, induce an energy by forcing the cell to leave the lymph node and be sequestered or leave the lymph node follicle, or inducing clonal deletion, which will kill off all cells with the same specificity.